Jesus, we love you, we worship you. Slow the extol and exalt you. Holy Spirit, we magnify you. Our Father, we glorify you. Let's go. We just give you the worship you deserve. We welcome your manifest presence. We are thy rule and reign. Let the flesh take glory today. Let Jesus alone be glorified. Amen. Thank you, Lord and King. Be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah. Once again, we want to welcome everyone person joining in and those who will join in later. Please, we want to encourage you that you allow the Holy Spirit to use you as a media evangelist. Click the like, click the share, and beautiful, drop a beautiful comment. Um, as, as, as a result of that, you are sharing the good work of Jesus. Amen to Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, we've been on restoration. Restore all things. Amen to Jesus. And uh, last week we took off from something very good. We understood um, 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 quite a lot yeah, um, yesterday. Sorry, yesterday was a, a wonderful eye opener. We understood that um, Elijah, while he spoke to Ahab and said, according by my word, he was not speaking in the realm and in the stand and in the office of the prophet then, but he was actually speaking in the realm, in the office of the status um, of the new creation. So he had a taste of better things to come in his time. He had a taste of the new creation. We learned that he entered into the new creation by prayer for a while, but by the, by the death and resurrection of Jesus, we're brought into the new creation. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. We understood that he entered into the new creation, like we said, uh, for a while by prayer. Amen. And um, um, somebody may ask and say, oh, after Elijah entered by prayer, but we be entered by the death and resurrection of Jesus. So is there any more need for prayer? Uh, today's lesson is going to help us get clarity in that way, in that, to that answer, to that question. Amen to Jesus. All right. So what's story today, the place and power of um, uh, um, um, uh, earnest prayer in restoration. The place and power of NS prayer in restoration. Praise God forevermore. And then after NS prayer, we're going to be going to effectual fervent prayer. Hallelujah to Jesus. We can remove prayer from the from the from the agenda of restoration. Amen. James 5 and 17. You see, when you read first Kings chapter 1, we just think that Elijah just came and he said that God there shall be no rain for three and a half years according to my word, and he left, and that was all he just spoke like that. And that's how we have a lot of Christians just speaking, and it's like what they speak is like nothing is happening, praise God. But we understood that Elijah got into that realm of becoming one with Yahweh in a place of prayer. Um, and James 5 and 17 made us understand that. He got one with Yahweh. So when Elijah came and it was actually Yahweh that walked out of the prayer room and God's word was revealed through a man. Amen to Jesus. James 5 and 17 makes us understand that it says, Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. So this will grant us revelation into your word in the name of Jesus. So before Elijah, Elijah came out and made a declaration, it had been settled in a place of prayer. And you're not saying now um, um, the declaration could hold weight and make effect because it was not actually uh, as it were his um, idea that was at work. It was the word of God at work, which was already set to the place of prayer. Now in our previous lesson, we learned that by prayers Elijah lived ahead of his time and entered into an era in realm and in dimension better than his era, time and realm. Now by prayers, Elijah entered into the realm and operations of the new creation, who is one with Yahweh. Amen. So when Elijah came out of the place of prayer, it was actually Yahweh who came out and spoke. It was not Elijah. Amen to Jesus. Thus, for a moment, Elijah had a taste of who the new creation is and what he is meant to enjoy. Now, I mean, let's say we learned that the new creation is the greatest, is the greatest status on earth created by God. Are you going to say after, after uh, the Godhead, the next is a new creation. And so, every other thing emanates from the new creation. We learn that ministry offices emanate from the new creation. You have to first be a new creation before you can be an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a teacher, uh, and, uh, and, and, and a pastor. And a pastor, you know what I'm saying? Now, so, the, the more that gives to the child, the new creation is the hallmark. The new creation is the zenith. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It's the zenith. Uh, are you getting me? Now, over the years, we have placed emphasis on offices, not on the zenith. Are you getting what I'm saying? Ministry, we have placed emphasis on ministry gifts, 
not on the personality itself. The emphasis is on the new creation, not on ministry gifts. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because the new creation grows to a level. I remember um, when, when, when one of our teachings when we talked about the man of God, amen to Jesus. And I did a post on that. On the man of God, amen to Jesus. And um, the man of God is one who, who, who actually has given himself to the world. And you get what I'm saying? The Bible says that the man of God, be not, you know, uh, 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 I'm paraphrasing, he will not be found wanting in every of this. So a person who has given himself to the place of the world, a person who has become one with God, he has matured into what is called the man of God, amen to Jesus. So um, the, 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 the offices, the, the ministry gift, they are actually things I would say you mature into. Praise God. That's how Apostle Paul says, when you are teachers, by now you are meant to be teachers, but you are still looking for someone to teach you. What does that imply? We mature into the teaching ministry. Yeah. Are you know what I'm saying? By right, every one of us is meant to mature into the teaching ministry. They're looking at the gift of the spirit, the gift of knowledge, one of knowledge, one of wisdom, the gift of prophecy. Now, by the time you mature at the new creation, you can mature into the place of, of the gift of prophecy. And then you now mature so much with the gift of prophecy that you now begin to occupy the office of a prophet. But the major emphasis is that you're what? A new creature. And you know what I'm saying? The new creature. The new creature. So the major emphasis is the new creature. And we must place emphasis on that. Amen to Jesus. Now, so we learned that Elijah had a taste and enjoyed who the new creature um, um, and who, who the new creature is and what the new creature is meant to enjoy. He enjoyed it by prayers. Now, we also learned that Elijah entered the realm of the new creature by prayer. Why the new creature was born into this realm by God? That's by the new man. Um, this information now brings a striking question. Amen. Brings a striking question. Elijah entered by prayer. The new creature entered by death. Now there's a core question that comes out. And the question is, if Elijah entered into the realm of the new creation for a while by prayer, and the new creation entered in by birth forever, is there still any need for the new creation to pray? Being that he or she is already more with God than you been, with God than you been. What Elijah cried for by prayer and enjoyed for a while. You didn't have to pray for it. You didn't have to ask for it. You didn't even know anything about it. You were just born into it. And you know what I'm saying? Just like a child who is born into riches, who is born into a royal family. Now, another child is, another person is out there praying and asking and, and, and fighting and struggling and working to get money. But somebody is just born into wealth. And you know what I'm saying? And that's what this makes this uh, the picture of this brings to us. Elijah could be likened to that person now there, spraying, crying to enter into to, to just get wealth. Why we the new creation, we don't know anything about wealth, we're just born into wealth. Now um, they always say that children who are born like that, it takes a lot of um, discipline for them to maintain the wealth. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now since we're born into it, do we still need to pray? Since we are already one with God, do we still need to pray? Now, aside other potent and cogent reasons for prayer listed below, with respect to the subject matter, purpose makes prayer essential and indispensable in the life of the new creation. But we're going to be looking at some um, the biblical cogent reasons why we have to pray. Many of us who are online, who are physical, many of us who are Bible students, we know these reasons. So they are not new to us, so I'm going to be going over them quickly. Amen. And first reason is that God knows your need, but He wants you to act to show that you really need it. First reason why we have to pray. God knows your need, but He wants you to ask to be to, for you to show that you really need it. Matthew 6, verse 32 says, For all for after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly father knoweth that you have need of all these things. See, this is very striking. He knows these things the Gentiles seek. He knows you need them. Are you going to say? He knows you need them. But look at Matthew 7, verse 7, where he says, and he says, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that accept receive it, and he that seeketh find it, and to him that knock it, it shall be opened. So he knows you need chapter 6. He's talking about um, be careful for nothing and every of that. Your father knows you, every father knows you. Then in chapter 7 he goes and he says, Ask. If he knows I need it, why do I need to ask? He has to be sure that you know what you need. 
What you train children, one of the things you do to them is, as you train them, you let them exercise the power of choice. And you get what I'm saying? And one of the things that um, financial hardship some of the time does to parents is that they force choices on children. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because I can't afford what he's going to choose. If you take the child to the shopping mall or to the market, uh, this is what you need. And you give the child because that is what you can afford. <laughs> you are always afraid to tell the child to choose. Are you getting what I'm saying? You are afraid to tell the child to choose. Praise God, because you may be you may be surprised that whatever you choose, your budget cannot take a event to Jesus. Alright. Now so um but we 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 have learned over the years that allowing them to use the power of choice from an early age actually develops them and helps them better. Are you know what I'm saying? It makes them know what they want in life. It's at any age you start you start telling them which of the clothes you want to wear. Is it the red one or the blue one? He chooses the red one. All right, fine. She chooses the red one. He chooses the blue one. Fine. And they are all good. Now, uh, and, but with that, some of the time it looks like you are spending more or you are taking more time, but you are actually developing the ability for them to make their choices in life. And so when you train them in life, they will be able to choose the right ways because you taught them the power of choice. But the child who did not teach the power of choice, after teaching them the principles of the kingdom, they will still not be able to choose rightly because they were not taught the power of choice. I get what I'm saying. So you teach the power of choice before you even start in quotes training. Because when you're not taught how to choose and you teach them so many theories, they won't even understand the power of the theories. I get what I'm saying. So God wants us to be sure that we know what we want. Are you getting me? Another reason for that was Genesis chapter um, 2, the Bible says that God said it's not good for the man to be alone. And he took, made a sleep, made him before he took a deep sleep, and he took one, one of a rib from me. It's the Hebrew word for rib, actually, is a side. So it was one side of Adam that was taken off. Amen. And then he created a woman and he brought you to Adam. And Adam said, Whoa, oh, this is indeed flesh of my flesh. I'm going to my book, because she's a God woman. He was excited. But now when the problem came, God told Adam, Ah, I've eaten of the food that I said I should not eat. The only thing say, the woman that you gave to me, the same woman he appreciated, he now, he now began to blame God for that. Now, so God knows that man knows how to appreciate when there's no trouble yet. But when trouble comes, <laughs> man does not appreciate, he begins to blame. I haven't you seen that two uh, a, 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 a young man and a young lady who were in love, they were just excited about themselves uh, in courtship. And when they enter into marriage, one year, two years, it turns into the blame game. But these people have excited with themselves before, but they now turn to make why? Because the natural man does not know how to appreciate when trouble comes. That's what the Bible says. He says, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Because he knows that most of the time when we come to the place of prayer and supplication, we are coming to blame or to complain. So he says, we have to have thanksgiving. If not, appreciation will not be in the picture. The natural man does not know how to appreciate things when they are not good. In fact, the natural man does not have to see good in a, in a, in a, in a challenging situation. So God allow, makes us use the power of choice in the place of us so we can be sure that this is what we are going to do. This is what we need. And you know what I'm saying? When you now ask for it and it gives it to you, you take responsibility for it. And what scripture went for that to say, he that find it in work. Now you are the one finding. That is a prayer life coming from the Lord. But that prayer life, he drops it for them by going down to go searching. The prayer life is already there, but you must search for the wife. The problem with that was I didn't do no search. God brought the prudent wife and drop her inside. He woke up and saw her. And some people say they need to go to Adam's sleep. No, you don't need to go to Adam's sleep again. God stopped the Adam's sleep business. Search. The, the rib is already there in a human being. Search. So that you be responsible for the, for the choice. And made the prudent wife, like I always tell people, marriage is an open prophecy. God packages what you need in not just one woman, it can be one and one woman. I get what I'm saying. So if situation where you make your search by the living of the spirit and this is the person that you are led to take, and the person says, no, 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 I don't like the way the guy looks. He's too skinny, he doesn't look like there's a future. And the lady says, no, God already always has a backup. So that you can easily pick up the backup. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, you have to search. You have to act so that you take responsibility for everything that you receive from God. 
God needs responsible people in his kingdom. Praise God. And number two, um, your joy is only full when you ask God in prayers. John chapter 16, verse 24 says, He that do have ye ask nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. Many of us are complaining, I'm not happy, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not content. I'm not. The reason why there's lack of contentment in the church, the Bible says holiness and contentment is great gain. The reason why there's lack of contentment, there's lack of joy among Christians, is because we do not ask. Are you gonna say it? He says, not just only are we to ask, he says, ask that your joy may be full. So if you don't ask, it is sure that your joy will not be full. Are you getting what I'm saying? God is never tired of us asking. Why? Because our the full the fullness of our joy is in our asking. So if we are not people who know how to ask, then we cannot get our joy full. Are you getting what I'm saying? And we, if we whine and cry and complain, it doesn't move God because the principle in place is. Your joy will only be full when you ask. The children of Israel, they came to the mercy. They started what? Complaining. They didn't ask the Lord. Okay, you can never ask the Lord. Ask Moses. They didn't ask Moses. They did the blessing was what? Complain of Moses. Now, God is not moved by complaints. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Because God never made any provision for complaining. Your joy will only be full in the place of asking. And asking is a, is, a, is, a, is a period of inquiry. That's why I said, ask that your joy may be full. Ask is a period of inquiry. You are getting information. You have to first inquire the Lord and inquire the Lord and inquire the Lord. In the process of inquiry, you get answers. I, I'm talking from experience. When I'm going through things, I ask the Lord, Lord, what is happening? And He always answers me. Some of the times, not at the moment, but some of the times at the moment, He always answers me. I get what I'm saying. And I notice that when he answers me, one of the signs to show that God has answered is that you have joy. Yeah. It may not be what you are looking for may not manifested physically, but the answer alone gives you joy. Why? Because the answer is an assurance that it will happen. Yeah. Are you know what I'm saying? So the reason why a lot of Christians are lacking joy is because they are not asking the relevant questions to God. They are not asking their father the relevant questions. And he wants to hear us ask him. Ask. Enquire. 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 Joy resides in the inquiry. Not just joy, but the fullness of joy resides in inquiry. Some people wonder why um, some of us are doing what we are doing for years. For years. The reason why we are still here is because we keep asking questions. Yeah. When God told me to founder the world 2009, I asked questions before then. Till date, I'm still asking questions. And it's basis of, this, of the answers he gives to me that I can continue the work. Even though I have not seen many of the things I desire, but I'm continuing the work because of what? Inquiry and answers. The answers keeps my joy full. And I continue. And you know what I'm saying? And that's how it operates. And inquiry is the first phase of prayer. Amen. What's the most thing prayer is? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. What's the most thing rush the stages of prayer? The first stage of prayer is what? Inquiry. Lord, what are you saying? You see, that's why prayer is fellowship. Fellowship is communication. Dialogue. Lord, what are you saying? Lord, what are you doing? There are many times when I pray that I tell the Lord, Lord, I don't understand. Lord, what is happening? Lord, what are you saying? Lord, what are you doing? And I do that again and again because my joy has to be full. Yeah. And as a child of God, your joy has to be full. Amen. Alright. Number three, we are instructed by scriptures to pray without ceasing. First Thessalonians 5 verse 17 says, pray without ceasing. Pray without break. Pray without any. That is why prayer is more than just going to one place and spending one hour. It talks. Are you getting what I'm saying? Prayer is more than uh, 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 shouting and, 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 and you know, uh, speaking so complex um, sentences and um, elaborate words. Prayer is beyond that. If you have to pray without ceasing, then how can you be able to live and carry out another day's activity? Because ceasing there in the brain, the brain of ceasing there is without ending, don't stop. So that means you have to pray 24-7, round the clock. How can you do that if you are 
only have to go to a place and stand and do it for one hour, two hours, and pray for one hour, then he said, I pray. If that's the only way prayer is done, then this scripture is not, is, 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 is uh, faltered. And then people say about pray in the watches. There's the so 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 time watch, there's the so so time watch. I'm not against those things. But I just want to make you understand that the Bible never said pray with watches. The Bible said pray without ceasing. So this makes us understand that prayer is not limited to time. I have to say, when you wake up by this time and pray, the heavens are open. So immediately the heavens are closed, and yet the Bible says, pray without ceasing. Please, I don't understand where we are getting this thing from. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I have to say, I feel God hears me better when I pray in my language. Ah. So the time you're not praying in your language, what's happening? And what he says, pray with our season. So it means that prayer goes beyond arrangement of words. It goes beyond ecclesia of words. It goes beyond dramatical structure. It goes beyond looking for a location. I've heard people say, you have to have a prayer altar. Child of God, the altar system came after the fall of man in Eden. And you get what I'm saying? In Eden, there was no altar system. The Bible said the people of the day did not came to meet with Adam. You get what I'm saying? In Eden, there was no altar system. In Eden, there was no sacrifice system. In Eden, we have a relationship system. A fellowship system. And that is what the new creation was taken back to. We're taking back to a fellowship system. A relationship system. Where we are to be in tune with God 24-7. The altar system makes you ask God for a touch. The sacrifice of the altar system makes you ask God for a touch. But the, the fellowship and the relationship system makes you remain in touch with God. That's why 24-7 you can hear him. He can whisper to you. He can speak to you anytime. Prayer is a connection with God to 24-7. 24-7, where your spirit man is, to, to, is, is permanently in touch and permanent, is permanently connected to the Lord. That's prayer. That's prayer. That's prayer. And that's the kind of church that the Lord is crying for. <laughs> that we in touch 24-7. 24-7. As they are talking to you, they can be hearing. As they are talking to you, the Lord is speaking to them. As they are talking to you, the Lord is speaking to them. As they are selling in the place of the place of the Lord is speaking to them. In the marketplace, the Lord is speaking to them. As they are selling the books of our time, the Lord is speaking to them. Anything they are doing, the Lord is speaking to them. They are speaking to the Lord, the Lord is speaking to them. That's what, that's what, that's what prayer is. Are you not saying? Everything they do, the Lord is in touch. They are in touch with the Lord. The Lord is communicating, they are communicating back. That's prayer. That's when prayer is prayer. Because prayer is to be done without interruption. But intermittent prayer is not prayer. And you know what I'm saying? Without interruption. And number four, we can only make our request known to God by prayer. Philippians from a season, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer. By what? By prayer. Not by complaint. Like somebody said, when you don't know what to do, a man of God said something, he said, Pastors, we're speaking to ministers. He said, When you don't know what to do, pray. And that's one thing I've been employing over the years. When I don't know what to do, I pray. Prayer, I can love my bed and say, Lord, talk to me. Lord, what is that? That is prayer. I you not know say. Yes, there are times I have to child build myself in, the, in my most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, you one verse 20. That, that, that I need that time where I have to charge myself, build myself in the Holy Spirit, pray in the Holy Spirit. But when you are when, when you, you are not, you know, in that charge system, you can still remain in prayer system. I you not know say. <laughs> Are we together? All right. So it's like prayer, you and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be known to God, not by complaining and murmuring. No. I see some say, God, what is happening now? Why do you feel this kind of thing? No, you are not talking to him. Man. You are not actually. You are not actually. You are not actually communicating. You see, one of the things I've learned over the while is communication, and we keep learning communication. We keep learning communication as we go on. If, if, if somebody helps you and you want to communicate something and you start up shouting, you're not communicating. You're not communicating. You're actually losing touch. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's communication. We, and how we communicate? By prayer. 
and supplication. But remember, it was not only prayer and supplication, it was enter what? Thanksgiving. If Thanksgiving is out of the whole system, then there is a problem. That's the reason why we must live thankful lives. It, it, it must be a creature. One of your, your sons should be thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. That should be one of the slants. You know, um, in fact, my daughter, she, 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 she always says it with me. When I say thank you, I don't even know when I say something like, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. I don't know when I just say that. She says it to you, oh, thank you, Jesus. Like, it should be one of the slants. Why? Because that is a show that you are praying without ceasing. And you know what I'm saying? You are, you are, committed, you, you are making your request known, but when you make it known, you should not end with request. Every prayer, that ascends to the Father ends with thanksgiving. That's why thanksgiving has to be a daily slang. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, we praise glory to God forever. It's not because you are trying to be spiritual. No, you are just ending your prayer. Are you know what I'm saying? Every time, the Bible says, for the one time to pray, as we want the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit get intercession for us. We groan in that cannot be God. And what groan in the Greek means great signs. You know, when you hear, mm, are you know something? Great size. Mm. With groanings, great size. So every time you make a great sign, are you know what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit interprets it to prayer. To the Father, sorry. Are you know what I'm saying? And that is prayer. Whenever I say, as a child, you make, hmm. You have just, the Holy Spirit does what? He interprets it to the Father. And because He's doing that continuously for you, you have to end the prayer with what? Thank you, Jesus. So after you do, hmm, thank you, Jesus. Yes, you are not happy. Hi. Thank you, Jesus. Because that hmm, is a prayer. That hmm, is a prayer. That is a prayer. You don't know you just prayed. But you just express your emotion. But because the Holy Spirit makes intercession with us, what does he do? He has carried your expression and he has interpreted it to the Father. And that's why you must end that prayer by saying what? Thank you, Jesus. Are we together? All right. Now, so we've seen four reasons why we have to pray. But we, we, we're going to be going to the um, emphasis of this teaching. That it's Elijah's purpose for entering into the realm. Are we together? Of the new creation. His purpose for entering into the realm requires the same measure Elijah took to end to stay in it. Are you know what I'm saying? The purpose for which Elijah entered into the realm requires the same measure Elijah took to what? To stay in the realm and also to do what? To bet that purpose. What was his purpose for entering into the realm? Elijah entered into the realm of the new creation because he wanted Israel to be restored to God. The purpose. What brought him to the place of prayer? Was his personal need? No. He saw he said, I, even I alone, am the new prophet with many. He said, I have been jealous for thee, O Lord. When he was in Matthew, I've been jealous for thee, O Lord. What took Elijah to the place of prayer was shocking me, not his personal need. Not food, not clothes, not what the Gentiles seek. Are we getting get what I'm saying? It's not wrong to go to prayer for what the Gentiles seek. But what took Elijah to the place of prayer was the restoration of all this. And we let um, on Wednesday that the restoration of all this entails the bringing back of creation to what? To the Creator. The bringing back of creation to the Father. And if all things are not restored, then restoration does not happen. We learn that restoration is bigger than when my car was lost and God gave me two cars. I lost a child and God gave me twins. I lost money and God gave me more money. I used to think like that. But when the Lord told me restoration for this spot, I began to think in that life. But I began to tell myself, no, no. I've been thinking like this for years. There will be something that I'm not knowing. And then that's when the Lord led me to restore all things. And I began, and, and I looked at myself, it was after me, John the Baptist. And I began to study. And I began to understand that restoration is bigger than me. <laughs> restoration is bigger than you. Restoration is about creation. And we are agents of restoration to bring creation back to the Creator. We are agents of restoration to bring creation back to the Father. We are agents of restoration to bring earth back to Eden experience. That means if the earth has to taste Eden before the second coming of Jesus. And who is to effect this? You and I. 
So we have gone past the level of God, my, I, I lost a job, give me to a return. God, I lost money, give me, give me more money return. God, I lost a, a, a house, give me more houses in return. God, I lost a car, give me more cars. Lord, Lord, a man tempted me because of that, give me a bigger man return. No, that understanding is a is 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 a, an infinitesimal limited understanding of resurrection, and that's why with all those prayers and with all those seemingly answers to prayers, the the creation is still not yet restored. I get what I'm saying because we lack the scope of restoration. What drove Elijah to the place of prayer was the restoration of what Israel to God. Humanity must come back to God. When that becomes a driving force, the restoration takes its full effect. If we want to restore all things to God, then we must employ the same measure used by Elijah, which is what? Prayer. Yes. And I believe I'm talking to somebody here who is tired of praying for me, myself, and I. I believe I'm going to let me tell you something, child of God. You need to understand something. That the moment we start thinking global, we start thinking at least you start thinking family, you start thinking your 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 your, your compound, your your street, your area, your community, your locality, your your city, your nation, and then you start thinking your country. Once you start thinking like that, you discover that your life becomes bigger than you. Until your mindset grows bigger than you, you will not enter into the quest for restoration. And that's what the church is lacking today. Until your mindset becomes bigger than you, you will not enter into the quest for restoration. And let me tell you, the only quest we are here for is the quest for restoration. The Bible says we are, we are, we are to reconcile men back to God. That's our quest. See, your quest is not to make money, child of God. Your quest is not to build a big house, to marry a fine wife, and give her to two small, small children, or three small, small children, or five small, small children, or whatever, and then live in one beautiful house, and build more beautiful houses, and uh, buy more fine, fine cars, and end your life. No! You are bigger than that. The quest of life is not the quest to acquire. The Bible says a man's life does not consist of the abundance of his possessions. And the quest of life is not a quest for success from human point of view. The quest of life is the quest to restore all things back to the Father. The quest to restore creation to the Father. That is why we are here. If not, you would have been, would have been taken from the enemy when you got born again. Elijah did it by prayer. By prayer. I've come a little while in ministry to understand that men don't change. Only two forces change men. One, it is God. God alone is the being alone that changed men. And number two, it is situations and circumstances. So if you want to see the change in the hearts of men, you cannot change a man. You have to pray change to enter. If that God give them a hand knock, like he did to Saul of Tassos, if that he knocks them on their asses, or experience makes them rethink. Like one of us said, he said there are two things that make people think upward. Either they have been charmed, or either they are blind. So but one thing is that when they have been charmed, suffering, Recalculate it. Suffering as a way of <laughs> facing the way the child. And number two, suffering recalculates your brain. That sometimes you have to pray, you have to pray for some people to experience some level of suffering so their brain can be recalculated. And you know what I'm saying? Restoration is only done by prayer. I'm talking from experience. You will talk to them, you are wasting your time. You will preach on the gospel, you are wasting your time. I have walked around explaining scriptures to people, you are wasting your time. I mean, not see people who tell you, ah, ah, eh, I bet you no problem, but they always give you a but. Then you come to understand that the restoration cannot come by talking. Jesus looked at the disciples and said, This kind, this kind. He go and not have, I said, by what? Fasting.
fasting and prayer. Prayer and fasting. There is a dimension of blessing. And I will tell you something. What we are looking for in the church is actually on the earth for us. The Bible says, Book of Prayer says, the profit of the earth is for all. So what are we meant to do? We are not meant to, we are not meant to till the earth. We are meant to restore the earth to Eden. And all we do is for dress and kill. In Eden, Adam was not tilling. It was when the cost came, God told Adam, from the sweat of your brow shall you eat of the earth. Cost is the earth for your sin. For tons and things which shall you bring to you, and from the sweat of your face shall you eat of it. In other words, the sweat of your face, the suffering that was added to the good and grease, was as a result of the cause. And tilling the earth was the end product of the cause. But from the beginning, Adam was to dress and to keep. And Adam was dressing and keeping because the earth was the 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 the, 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 the agent was actually restored, was actually the Lord, and it was with him. Are you getting what I'm saying? It was totally God. Are you getting what I'm saying? That was the original state. But when Adam lost it, he sold the world to, to, to the devil. Are you getting what I'm saying? He sold the system to the devil. And so what's that? What, what does that bring about? Because he has sold them, he had to, he had to swear to eat from the same earth that he was dressing and keeping. So our problem is not the hustle. Our problem is restoration. If we can restore the, our simple that area where we are, if we can restore it back to the Father, the child of God, we will not sweat to eat. If we keep, we will simply dress and keep. I see a lot of Christians struggling. I remember the gentleman that going to church. I told them once. I said, if you chase money, it will fly. Did you understand? And I asked them, can you use your leg to pursue a bed and catch a bed? All of them said no. And I said, the Bible says money has wings and it flies. The more you chase it, the more it flies. But it amazes me that they didn't still understand. And that's what is breaking our generation. When you tell them, pray for the restoration of creation to the Father, they don't understand that when I pray for the restoration of creation to the Father, I'm actually praying myself to dress and keep. Yes. But many of them prefer to eat from the sweat of their face. And that's why they tell you different explanations, hustle, hustle, this and that. Are you getting what I'm saying? We were not created originally to hustle. The gods made us hustlers. We were created originally to dress and keep. And what is the secret to dressing and keeping? It is the restoration of all things to the Father. When we take our localities back to the Indian experience, child of God, we will dress and keep. The war power we celebrate today was built on the foundation. America was built on the foundation of so many revivals. So many revivals. So many revivals. The, uh, the devil has fought left hand and center. But the, the, the country is still standing strong. Why? Because it was built on the altar of God. So many revivals. Prayers soaked the ground like no one's business. The founding fathers, seven of them were, were ministers, and they covenanted the country with the Lord. And the country began to experience economic booms, technological advancements. And you cannot say, child of God, this is what is lacking our times again. Prayer to enforce restoration. What kind of prayer did Elijah pray? Let's go with me. James 5 and 17 says, Elias was a man subject to life passion, like passion as we are. And he prayed earnestly. 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 What kind of prayer did Elijah pray? Elijah prayed an earnest prayer. An earnest prayer. He didn't just pray. He prayed an earnest prayer. See, we are, we are students of the world and we must be particular about words in scriptures. Because we're not particular about them, we'll miss and we'll cast off restraints. Endless prayer. He prayed to the uh, endless prayer for uh, 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 to seize the rain, which gave rise to what? A restoration. And the same kind of prayer bears the restoration of all things. Endless prayer. Endless prayer. Endless prayer. Endless prayer. That kind of prayer is what bears the restoration of all things. Now, what is an endless prayer? What's an endless prayer? 
The word endless is from the um, Greek word prosuke. 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 That's what endless is. It's a Greek word prosuke. Prosuke. And prosuke means a prayer addressed to God. <laughs> a prayer what? Addressed to God. Addressed to God. The Bible Webster Dictionary defines address as to write on an envelope, package, letter, etc. The name and address of the person or business it is being sent to. So, an endless prayer is a prayer that is what? Sent to God, not to man. Are you going to say? That's why God has a little challenge with the children of Israel in the wilderness. And never there's a problem, they never know how to send prayer to God. They only know how to send complaint to Moses. And they send more to God. <laughs> and we have people like that today. They send complaint to, if there's a problem in the family, the husband sends complaint to the wife, sends the blame game to the wife, like, 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 like Adam, blame game to the wife, and then sends more to God. And yet you think we are praying. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a prayer that is sent to God, not to man. One of the problems we have today is that many of us, we are good at sending our prayers to men. A man of God said something. He said, what did the Lord told him? Can you use one eye to look up? And use the other one to look down at the same time. He said, oh Lord. He said, the Lord, and the Lord told him, when you are looking up to men, don't claim to be looking up to me. <laughs> Many of us are good at sending prayers to men. Sending prayers to men. Sending prayers to men. In fact, some of us are good at sending prayers to ourselves. I told somebody something while ago. I said, when you go to the place of prayer and you come out of the place of prayer depressed, you only pray. You only complain. <laughs> you only came, you only came to send, send prayer to yourself. I thought we said, I just went to pour out. Are you sure you pour out? Bible said, Jesus said, cast the body and cast your body at my feet. And he said, for he cares for you. When we go, we are trying to cast our body. But well, you know what some of us do? We carry the body. We go to the feet of Jesus. We drop it there. We wait. Then when we are going back, we now carry the body. I will not look for someone else's body to carry it alongside and we go back. Then we are more, we are, we are more way down when we are coming out than where we than where we will be when we went. So it is a prayer that is addressed to God. This means that God is the center, He is the focus, and is the receiver of the prayer. He's the what? Center, the focus, and the receiver of the prayer. And then this prayer has God as the center, the focus, and the receiver. He doesn't have our needs, our wants, our problems, our desires as the center, the focus, and the receiver. Because some of the time when we say we are praying, we are actually making our needs the center. We are making our wants the center. We are making our problems the center. We so amplify the world's needs and problems that we will forget that we are actually meant to be addressing them, sending them to God. Are you going to say? Yeah. I remember, I uh, was it yesterday, yesterday in the other I began to think of something. I think of something, okay, at the point I said, Lord, ah, even if I'm not just mercy, but I made up my mind, okay, I'm, going to, I'm not going to allow this challenge stay in the night. Why? Because if you say you are actually praying and you exalt the problem in your mind, you exalt that need in your mind, your personal need, you have not addressed the prayer to God. You have not properly addressed it to yourself. And if you address an envelope to yourself and send it to the post office, what does the post office do? <laughs> it brings it back to you. <laughs> Many of us, we actually go, we address the problem, the everything to ourselves, and we post it. And the agent that we sent to send it to God, he brings it back and says, This is the address that is there. <laughs> when these wants and problems become the focus or and center of prayer, it is not an endless prayer, it is a prayer addressed to man. I want to 
today in the church, we have need centered prayers. Words, one centered prayers. Problem centered. I'm not against that. You get what I'm saying? But please, please, for the past three years, all you have been doing every time you come to church is your, your need, your word, your problem. Where will you, where will you address God? <laughs> because actually you have been addressing yourself. Uh, you get what I'm saying? I remember in um, the, 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 the parish, my dad was a pastor there, and there was a particular one, I can never forget it, but I always give that analogy. As the service is starting, let us lift up our voice and bless the name of the Lord God. That is the, 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 basically the choir leader, the, 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 the praise worship leader we start off with, you know. Let's lift up our voice and bless before they start singing. Let's lift up our voice and bless the name of the Lord. The pastor, Lord, my, my, my wife, my children, my house, my wife, my children, my life, my wife. Ah, we are worshiping. Let us worship the Lord. And then the singer starts singing. Why the singer singing, Lord, my wife, my children, my life, my wife. Ah, ah. The worship leader the finish for the entire prayer. Look, my two of the whole service, then he manages to sit down there is an usher. He manages to usher during the during the message. Once they say they are finished preaching, the pastor has preached this line and he said, Let's pray. The man leaves the prayer point and back to the same prayer. Lord, my wife, my children. I didn't understand that time what was happening, but now I understand better. He was always addressing his prayer to himself. And I later learned that he even left the faith. I was not happy to hear this, but if he had somebody who could do it, then we used to just watch him. We didn't know. But if actually there was somebody who could make him understand what prayer meant, I think maybe he would have not left the faith. This is why we need a lot of teachings and discipleship. Shouting does not mean the prayer is an endless one. Crying does not mean the prayer is an endless one. Even in court, sometimes speaking in tongues does not mean the prayer is an endless one. The prayer is an earnest prayer when the prayer is addressed to God. Are you getting what I'm saying? When God is the focus and the center of the prayer. An earnest prayer is only made when the one praying knows that God is all and God alone can do. And when you see, when you come to the place of prayer, you are and you are um you are we are we are working probability. Maybe he may, maybe he may not. You are just address that prayer to yourself. I you know what I'm saying. When you come to the place of prayer with the understanding that this God sometimes he's to answer, sometimes he doesn't to answer. And when you come to the prayer, like some people tell you, God may choose to heal you and may not choose to heal you. That's a life from the pit of hell. That is a, a satanic life to make people not pray endless prayer, but to pray confused prayers and to pray uh, probability prayers. And to pray um, self-addressed prayers. When a prayer is prayed of probability, it is addressed to probability. When it's prayed without an understanding of the love of God, it is it is it is prayed to some some others or something else. I don't say. But if prayer must be earnest, it must be addressed to God with the understanding, the revelation that God is. And God alone can do. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Say, he that comes to God must believe that he is. And he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. I remember there are times I would just tell our uh, pastor that he's a rewarder. So the talk of that, when I say that, is it's, 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 it's when the, the pressure is high. When you don't know where there is to go, he's a rewarder. No, this, this man, this God, he cannot use me and dump me. He cannot be smiling like this. People are still wondering why I'm still preaching. Some of them are, are saying, it is there, is, it doesn't get to have something to do with his life. But you know what? He's a rewarder. He's a rewarder. That when I say that he is a rewarder, I have just prayed an earnest prayer. Because I'm praying with the revelation of who God is, and I'm addressing the prayer to him. He is a rewarder. When you come to the place of prayer and you say he is a healer. You are praying an earnest prayer. Are you know what I'm saying? The focus is not your need. The focus is the one who you are praying to. When a man still has an alternative, he cannot pray an earnest prayer. An earnest prayer only comes into the scene when the one praying has only one option with no alternative, and that is God. Are you know what I'm saying? And now when you are coming to the place of prayer for restoration, this is the way to pray to. God hears. 1 John 4, verse 
14, 14 and 15. But this is the confidence we have. That when we pray in this way, he heareth us. And if he heard us, then we have received our petitions. Ah, when you come like that, and you begin to pray for the restoration of what is, even when it looks like you have been praying for months and you have not seen anybody saved, you have not seen your, your locality come to Jesus, you have not seen your locality restored to God, you are not shaking. Why? Because you came with an understanding and you are addressing the prayer to God. Not to your locality, not to your community, not to your family. Are you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you are addressing the prayer to God. You don't address prayer to problems. The actual reason why you came to the place of prayer is because of the problem. So why should you not, because of the problem, see address the prayer to the problem? That's confusion. That is Babel. You address prayers to God. Knowing that God is and God alone can do. Yes. <laughs> Uh, although we are new creations who are born with the Father by new birth, we can only enforce the manifestation of our new birth on earth by prayers. And we can only enforce the restoration of all things to the Father by prayers. You ask not. You receive not because you ask not. If you are still satisfied with the status quo in your family, then don't pray. Your father is not born again, your mother is not born again, you are looking at them go to hell. If you are still satisfied with your locality, your environment, the way the devil is raising their alarm, the way the devil is going wild in your locality, if you are still satisfied. And you know one truth, Christians are complaining. Why they are complaining? The Bible says in the book of the says there is an evil of sin. For the slaves are riding on horses and the princes are trekking. Why is he an upside and a raven? Because princes refuse to restore all things. When princes take the pool by the horn, when they begin to choose to restore all things, child of God, slaves will start trekking. You are complaining. I know the funny thing, the people that we celebrate in the church, are souls of the devil. We celebrate them all. We use them as our examples. We use them as our examples. If you have been using them for example, what would you restore it is? You have chosen to be their subject. You have chosen, by using them as your examples, you have chosen to keep trekking while they should keep riding on horses. Ah, you know what I'm saying? And we say, you know, we celebrate them all. And they laugh at us when we celebrate them. We have the at us. Because they know that we are the ones who actually have these things. But because we have refused to enforce our restoration mandates, they are taking, they are having a few days in it. Child of God, in all the mountains, we are the ones meant to be leading. Man. But the reason why we are not leading is because we don't understand the restoration mandate. See, they say politics is dead. Who made it dead? Who made it dirty? If the water is dirty, if you put a lot, the dirt will set you. Is that not so? <laughs> if you put a lot, it will set you. You can use the purification process. In fact, the first purification process is put a lot. At least the first set of dirt will set you before you answer going for that purification process. The problem is that we are refusing to bring a lot. We are lazy. At least let's start with a lot. Before you start going to water purifiers and everybody, start with a lot. Let's have your love. When I tell you, come and pray for restoration, say, Pastor, you don't understand. See, I'm not, I'm, I'm not paying my last to Pray for restoration. Pastor, you don't understand. Don't feel it. Pray for restoration. Use that love first. You are not meant to be sweating to eat. You are meant to be dressing and keeping. Yes. There is a country where they pay their, they pay their people. Whether you have a job or not, they pay you. What's your problem? Who told you we're all created to come and be working like Jackie before we eat? There's some of us who are meant to just be paid for even being alive. Yes. Yeah. But the problem is that you are, you are not ready to bring, bring the alarm. The alarm is inside you, but bring it out is a problem. You bring it out with prayer. We are praying, we are crying for a generation that will get angry with the status quo. That will get angry with the mess that we are in. And we start praying. Some of us may not enter into some mountains. We are already in our mountain. This is my mountain, though. 
that is why I'm using my mountain to charge you. But some of you are to enter into politics mountain. Some of you are to enter into the entertainment mountain. Some of you are to enter into the education. You are to enter into the media mountain. Some of you are to enter into different mountains. My job is to charge you so you can pray restoration into your mountain. And when you enter into your mountain, everything will be restored back to the Father. That's what we are looking at. That's what I want to hear. That's what I want to hear. That's my job here. Yeah. And let me tell you, this kind only happens by endless prayer. Yes. <laughs> it's not like Tok Tok. We have left the generation of Tok Tok. English does not work again now. The demons in operation now, they don't, they don't answer English. They only answer slap by angels. They only answer hard box by angels. And hard box and slap only comes in the place of endless prayers. If you speak English, now these demons don't care about English. They don't care. They don't care about your English. They don't care about your packaging. They don't care about your, your educational qualification. No, 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 no. We told the educational qualification, somebody that does not have SSC, we see come and be bossing you. And you say, yes, sir, yes, sir. Ah, there's an error. There's an error. There's an error. And only the endless prayer of restoration can right the wrong. An endless prayer is one we seek the will of God to be established on the earth. Jesus said, pray this way, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom, the establishment of the kingdom of God and the will of God on earth is the end product of an endless prayer. Child of God is good, we need all these miracles. But we are going to let God know that at this level we now have to start becoming the miracles. We have to become the miracles. I was talking to a particular gentleman, he told me in their business area, in the marketplace, oh boy, they shoot themselves anyhow. They shoot themselves like crazy. So, man, if you don't know how to pray some dangerous prayers of restoration, you just fall like nothing. We are meant to be the miracles now. We are meant to enforce the will of the Father on earth. We are meant to enforce the kingdom of God on earth. And this only comes by what? Endless prayer. I think it's time we need all this God bless me prayer. God bless me as the who bless God who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings, every blessing in Christ Jesus. We are ready to be blessed. Though. The manifestation of your blessing on the earth is tied to the restoration of the creation to the Father. It's as simple as that. So you have been blessed, but for it to manifest, so the creation has to be restored. Some of you, your birth just has to be born again. Because your promotion is tied to be born again. <laughs> Some of you, your boss has to make you the next in command. You have to be a major shareholder. But he has to be born again. If not, if they take you to that position, though you have met the requirement for it, you enter inside the, uh, the, the, the chamber, the meeting room, and all of a sudden, they'll tell you to start cutting your thumbs and putting your blood into calabash. You, what do you do by that time? <laughs> Gentleman. They just promoted him to become the CEO, they promoted him to become a manager board director. Managing board director. And he was thanking God, hallelujah, thank God for such a promotion. Only for them to have a meeting, board members. And in the meeting, with the table there in the meeting, what happened? They told them they brought a calabash and so everybody cut your thumb and spill your blood into the calabash. Eh? Is this a promotion? Oh, he said he didn't know when he brought out <laughs> his mantle. And as he brought it out, the, 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 the room was airtight. It was closed, sorry. All, all windows closed. AC tight. No way for any window to have, for bricks to come in from anywhere. So, but the wind blew and it hit the calabash down. And that was the end. Definitely, he will not return back there again. But I tell you, it's a good thing to be promoted sometimes, but it's a better thing when those at the top are restored. Are you getting me? When they are restored, our promotions will be stable. God has blessed us. 
But the secret to the manifestation of our blessings is the restoration of all things of the Father. What are the end result of NS prayer? When an NS prayer is made, the result is the one praying reduces and God increases. Thus, it becomes more of God and less of the man. Till it totally becomes God and none of the man. This was a prayer that John the Baptist prayed. We saw it as a rendition or as a statement, but it was more than a statement, it was a prayer. John 3 verse 30. He must increase, but I must increase. That is the end result of an earnest prayer. It becomes totally all of God and none of you. Same thing Elijah experienced. That's why he could come and say, I call it. Yeah, God is the one speaking, I'm not the one speaking. That was an earnest prayer God to you. That's what he does to me. It becomes totally God and none of us. I read the writer of somebody said, You think that I don't get anything by prayer? Yes, I don't get anything by prayer according to you, but I lose so many things by prayer. He said, I lose self. I lose, I lose pride. I, I, I lose bad habits. I lose wrong taste and desire. So, with all the things I've lost, I think I've gained God. The, end, the, the place of the endless prayer is to make you gain God and lose self. Until we attain that, we cannot manifest our new creation status and identity. The endless expectation of the creation waited from the manifestation of the sons of God. The endless prayer takes you to the states where it is none of you, but all of God. It is none of me, but it's all of God. At that point, I have totally decreased and diminished and disappeared, and he has totally increased. How many of us are ready for any prayer? But before we pray, I want to pray for that person, that brother, that sin, that's not the son of my voice. You don't make Jesus your Lord and Savior. This is the best decision you can ever make. Just say this prayer after me, and I'll be glad to have to lead you into this decision. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I know that I'm a sinner. I know that you died and resurrected for me. And by your blood of Calvary you shed, you took away my sins. Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I receive you as my Lord and personal Savior. Because you chose me, I choose to choose you all my life and save you all my life. Thank you, Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for everyone who has made this prayer. I thank you for receiving them the beloved. I thank you for granting them the grace to serve and follow you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Now, please, if you make these prayers um, and you want to get in touch with us, please do well to get in touch with us. Chibiola, Munamishu at gmail.com is our email. Um, www.chibiola.org is our website. On this Facebook page, you can get in touch with us. And we'll be glad to get to hear from you and to, to help you grow in the faith. Amen to Jesus. How many of us are ready to pray this morning, this afternoon, this evening, wherever you are? You are praying one prayer and you say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I receive grace, I receive grace to, pray to pray for the establishment, for the establishment of, the kingdom of, God of the kingdom of God and the will of God, and the will of God on this earth. On this earth. On the earth. On the earth. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Ratika Supra Kata Lava
that should have given you a paradise from the beginning. I tell you that I should have married you three years ago that I met you. What was wrong with me? That's what I pray for it. That's what I pray for it. I pray to the Lord the baptism can show up to God. The baptism of the spirit of Elijah in the place of prayer for restoration. Yes, Lord. The place of prayer to enforce the will and the kingdom of God on earth. The place of prayer to only see God manifest in our societies. Let that baptism rest upon us now in the name of Jesus. Amen. That the only half time we have is the cry for the restoration of all things to the Amen. Father. Amen. Same way Elijah's cry was for the restoration of Israel. Allah to turn your way. Yes. My father, that hard cry, let it burn in every one of us. Amen. And our only cry shall be the restoration of all things. Amen. Turn your way. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm praying for the sick now. You're sick in your body. I just want you to place your hand wherever you're sick and cross the sickness now. Go ahead and cross it. Cause that infirmity, cause that disease, cause that discomfort. You have received power. Cause it. Cause it to the roots. As we are crossing now, healings are happening. Healings are happening. Blind eyes are opening. Yes, deaf ears are popping open. I see a blockage in one nursery. The blockage is released now. Yes, the blockage is released now. Masi katasa. I anabatosa balati atala baswata. I breakete. I see somebody, a pipe is passed from your nose into your intestine. I don't know what that is for. But whatever that ailment is, it is destroyed now. That infirmity is destroyed. That sickness is destroyed now. As I'm talking to you now, you are feeling a discomfort in that nose, in that nostril now. You are feeling a discomfort. And the discomfort is because what that pipe was doing before, it has stopped functioning it. It has said, now you can do it normally. And as I'm speaking to you, the pipe is beginning to drop off. Amen. It's beginning to drop off now. Amen. And your healing is permanent. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, uh, somebody who has been diagnosed of serious kidney failure, a tear at a swatter, and like, uh, your kidney has packed up, and you are on the verge of death. The dialysis, you are doing your best in dialysis, but it looks like you're not getting your, your, your desired result. The power of God is running through your kidney now. Amen. And is restoring it back. To the original state. In the name of the I see somebody, your heart has a serious heart condition. A serious heart condition. Your heart is not pumping and beating as it's meant to beat and pump. It's not pumping and beating and meant to beat and pump. I'm seeing it slow down seriously. Slow down. It's slowing down seriously. And then it's getting weaker by the day. The power of God is coming. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is entering that heart now. And it is jacked back to life. It is restored to its original state. In the name of God. We cause sicknesses and disease. And I decree everything you have caused is caused forever. Health and restoration is yours. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God for the Lord. Thank you for your time once again. Um, it's going to be a Monday next week. See you Monday next week, same time. God bless you. Grace to you.